Thank you for joining me today to talk about COVID-19 and the expansion of teleradiology. I appreciate your taking the time to talk with us about this important topic for providers. To jump right in, given that we are talking about this need for expanding teleradiology, with a background of CMS recently relaxing the rules and regulations around telehealth, is this something that you feel like is going to facilitate the expansion of teleradiology in a significant way? I think it's kind of interesting because I was probably the most excited when I saw that. Um, you know, for any groups to get licensed in a different state, it takes forever. Um, you know, we're trying to get physicians licensed in Pennsylvania today, and they require you to go through all sorts of tests, all sorts of exams. Um, it's a very long, drawn out process. The same is true in Texas. The issue that I think we're going to run into is just because you have physicians licensed now in different states doesn't mean they're going to get reimbursed for what they do. Um, reimbursement is a completely separate phenomena. So you have the commercial carriers that are going to say these are out-of-network docs or these docs don't have contracts with us. And there's an economic side to it as well, which means that the physicians, when they start reading across state lines, sure, they're able to do that, but they're not going to get reimbursed for that um, from the commercial carriers. And Medicare will, of course, reimburse them, but Medicare is one portion of um, the population, right? You have a lot of patients who are getting sick who are not Medicare patients as well. I mean, the majority of them are younger patients who are getting sick, so they're going to have other insurance. So how do you collect on that? Um, and while that's not the primary focus by any means, it is something that one needs to be cognizant of, right? Because these practices have to exist as well. And today what's happening, what we're seeing happen right now is in radiology, the volumes have just plummeted because elective procedures have been canceled or postponed. So you have groups that have hundreds of physicians or you know, 40, 50 physicians, but their volume is dropped by about 40, 50%. And their revenue is gonna drop by a much greater percentage because the large amount of revenue that they get is from the outpatient setting. And what's happening is the outpatient setting has just disappeared. So how are these practices gonna exist going forward? I mean, it's a very real, even though we shouldn't be thinking about the economic um, aspect of it right now, it's something that we do have to consider because these practices are having to make tough decisions. Which physicians do they let go of? Do they let go of the older physicians? Do they put them on furlough? Do they let go of the younger physicians? What is, you know, what is the approach? And physicians are not good businessmen by nature, they're good doctors. And they're having to make these business decisions right now. And so we're trying to help them through that as well. What guidance or advice can we provide to physicians who are facing these decisions? Yeah, so I think um, the, key, the key is, number one, we need to identify where we can get them more volume from. So all of a sudden what's happened is you have the same number of doctors, your volume's gone down because your outpatient centers are not doing any of the work anymore. So how do we get more volume to these doctors? And that's where teleradiology can play a big part, right? We have doctors today who are subspecialized in every aspect of radiology. Do we want um, the doctors who are chest, who have chest subspecialties reading all the coronavirus cases? Should we create a center of excellence where all those cases go to these doctors who have a subspecialty in you know, chest um, studies and let them read um, the chest studies? Um, do we go and look for opportunities? You know, Army Corps of Engineers is gonna be setting up hospitals all over the place. Um, they're gonna need radiology services. Can we get these doctors on the front lines of that as well? To help them cover those reads. These are cases that were not originally there. Um, the other thing that's also happening right now with teleradiology, which teleradiology can play a role in, is because most people are working from home, we're seeing a lot more cases where patients are falling uh, in the house, or they're tripping on something, or they're getting electrocuted because they're doing some electrical work, or they're cutting their fingers. Those are the kind of cases we're seeing now. I mean, that's the bread and butter. It's completely changed. It's no longer what we used to see you know, vehicular accidents are now a rar rarity, whereas before there used to be a lot more um, because pe people aren't out on the road anymore, right? Um, so it's very interesting, the dynamic has changed and I think there's a role for teleradiology over there as well, that you can have your subspecialty centers that are just focusing on different areas of um, medicine, if you will, to deliver the best patient care. Okay. To your point, as far as the business side goes, um, you know, I think uh, the physicians, we need to just keep them aware of all the laws and legislations and bills that are being passed um, so that they're also not making decisions that will hurt them in the future. For example, there's a bill now that says that they're going to pay two months of payroll. The government will provide two months of payroll relief um, for small businesses. Um, so they don't want those people laying off, the businesses laying off these people. Well, so let's have our radiology groups, let's have our practices, just be aware of what's coming, what's, you know, what's in, you know, coming in that direction before they make any um, hasty decisions 
Um, because once you lose these employees, you're not going to get them back. I mean, that's just the reality, right? They're going to, it's not going to sit well, especially with the outpatient setting. So if you can delay that and you can absorb some of the hit amongst yourselves, I think that's the right thing to do. And circling back around to the idea of spreading tele or spreading tele teleradiology more uh, across state lines, um, what else can be done to facilitate this and, and try to make this as sustainable as possible for the long term as we go forward? So I think one of the concerns that I have right now that's coming up is just the internet's going to break. We're seeing that today. Uh, you know, you can, so this notion of telehealth, everybody's pushing telehealth, everybody's putting, pushing teleradiology. You have, um, you know, people on Netflix, you have people, you know, streaming live video. The internet's not able to handle that today. And what we're seeing is, you know, situations where you, you can send and try sending an image from a hospital to a radiologist. They're just not going through because the bandwidth isn't there. It's been drained. So I think it's important just to throw that out there as um, a cautionary tip, if you will, that, you know, you have to have a backup plan. So you have to have boots on the ground somewhere. So if there is a connection that goes down, your doctors can go in there. Similarly, you have to have backups as far as different internet connections. Right, let's use different lines. Let's use fiber optics in some cases. Let's use cable in others. So you're not, you know, in case one gets clogged, you have another solution as well. But um, teleradiology is growing. Um, uh, it's been growing quite a bit. Uh, I think what we can do, even without state lines, is there's just ample opportunity in the rural hospital setting as well. A lot of the rural hospitals don't get the care that they need because they are rural hospitals. So we can focus on providing them with teleradiology solutions within the state itself. Um, crossing borders, I think the key is going to be just how do you, number one, when you get past the read, how do you deal with the patients? Now, all of a sudden, the patient's going to get a bill from a group in Texas, and they're in Florida. They're going to be like, I never went to Florida. And you have to explain that to the patient. It's going to create another set of, um, you know, uh, concerns from the patients. They're going to be like, you know, have I been, is it fraud? Has someone stolen my identity? Um, I was never there. They don't understand teleradiology. They don't understand the radiologist might not be there. In many cases, they don't even understand they're having a radiology procedure that's going to require a radiologist to interpret their study. All they know is they're getting an x-ray done. And guess what? They paid for that x-ray when they went into the center or they went into the hospital. Now, all of a sudden, they're getting a bill and they're like, why am I getting this bill? But now they're going to get a bill from a completely different state. And they're going to be like, why? You know, why? So there's going to be an educational curve that needs to be handled with that as well. But I think we need to also lessen the burden on the, on the physicians as far as credentialing goes. So today to credential in a hospital, it's, it's a process. The hospitals don't have these resources just sitting around doing nothing. They have the medical executive um, staff, if you will, the medical record staff that's doing all the credentialing. You only have a few people doing that. And now all of a sudden, my group's going to come in and we have 100 radiologists and I'm going to say credential these 100 radiologists. And they're going to be like, there's no way I can credential them. How am I supposed to credential them? So, you know, it's, it, there's much more to it. Um, it sounds great that they're relaxing these state guidelines and state laws, but they haven't really thought it through all the way. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you have the reimbursement costs that are coming as well for the radiologists um, with the ENMs and everything else that's coming. Um, that's a big, that's a big whammy as well. So there's just a lot that one needs to think about um, on this side of the equation. Uh, and you know, while teleradiology is a solution, um, one has to look at the economic side of it as well. Of course, we need to deliver the care and our doctors will gladly be on the front line, irregardless of the economy, um, irregardless of the econ economics. However, at the end of the day, for a long-term solution, you have to make sure that you know, they can actually survive.